All right, so my journey began about five years ago when I first switched from my AT&T DSL setup to cellular-based home internet, and now I am rocking, uh, let's see, five, six different 5G home internet plans. That includes two Verizon ones, two T-Mobile home internet ones, and, uh, sorry, three T-Mobile ones, and then one AT&T uh, internet air uh, which is their home internet plan so i've been testing these making videos on them i have lots of dozens of videos on different topics for this video specifically i'm going to tell you about kind of my summary of what i've learned in five years of dealing with these things modifying them um, some of this stuff is going to be me recommending products that help you some of it's free and just little tips and tricks you need to do yourself um, and also a little bit explaining what things to watch out for with cellular home internet versus something like cable satellite or fiber internet that you might have as well. Now, before I get too far, I always have to say this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. So I do appreciate you giving me a thumbs up on the video and also consider subscribing to my channel. That helps the channel grow and it improves my videos over time. So thank you for tuning in. Now, what I'll do in this video is I'm gonna go over a lot of high level things. I won't go into the details for those. I would recommend you to check out my video links. I'll put some in the description or the first comment down below to help guide you as well as product links and product discounts where I have coupon codes that you can use as well. All right, so let me hit on the first thing and that's maybe why to get 5G home internet. For me, it was out of necessity. I was uh, stuck with an old AT&T internet service that went off my phone lines. I think technically it was copper last mile, so it wasn't full um, old school DSL. But still, it was not keeping up with the needs of broadband internet in the family, especially once we hit COVID and I had to work from home uh, five or more days per week. So that was something that forced me to look into other options. Starlink wasn't available in my area. So my only other new option, emerging technology, was this cellular-based home internet. And that's where I found actually 4G uh, T-Mobile home internet was offered, and I got that, and that's what got me kind of started. But then I quickly got to 5G. Uh, for T-Mobile, I had 5G Verizon um, as well. And so those really brought a whole step change to my speed. And ever since then, I've been learning how to modify or improve or get different products that help give me faster speed. And in fact, I just surpassed one gigabit per second with um, my best setup that I have today. And I'll talk about that in, in a second here. But the other reason that people go to a cellular home internet is not because they have to. They might have cable or they might have a fiber available to them, but they're doing it because it's cheaper. And for that one, I'll put a big asterisk on that because I would say it has been cheaper and they definitely had a lot of price wars going on to try to get you down. I mean, I think some people are locked in at 25 bucks a month or something for some of these unlimited home internet plans, which is an outstanding deal. But at least right now, at the end of 2024, you can't get those uh, deals. They do have discounts if you have one of their phone unlimited plans or whatnot. But in rough speaking, without major discounts, you're going to pay about 50 bucks a month for one of these home internet services, which I think is roughly on par with other plans like um, cable or fiber. Um, but that all depends on your area. So you might be able to save money, but that's really probably not as big of a factor nowadays anymore. So... Um, the other thing to know about the home internet is, of course, the speeds. And this is where some of the caveats come in with cellular-based internet is that it's not a one-size-fit-all. I've had people, you know, I'm about one mile from my tower. I do some testing. Let's say I got the one gigabits per second. Someone else says, hey, I'm a half mile from my tower, and I can't get half that speed. What am I doing wrong? The truth is you might be doing nothing wrong, and that might just be the speed that you can get at your house with that tower, and it can be for a lot of factors, and that's why it's so hard to give you an answer is there are tower limitations, there's signal interference, there's backhaul limitations, there's deprioritization that goes on. So long story short is they very rarely uh, claim a speed for the 5G home internet, and that's because they don't really know what it's going to be for you at your home uh, due to a lot of factors. Now, Verizon does do a little bit better with kind of a promise or um, more consistent speed, I would say, and but that's because they throttle it. So the fastest throttle that they have, I think, is 300 megabits per second down and 20 up. And so I've seen that over and over again, no matter what I do, including if I modify the gateway box or whatnot, it does not improve. So uh, they have other lower tier plans that actually are throttled, I think, as low as 100 megabits per second for download. So uh, you do have to understand, I'm not going to get into each one, all their nuances, but uh, Verizon has been um, the most consistent as far as they do throttle 
their home internet plans. Uh, T-Mobile does not throttle, but they do de deprioritize. Not that Verizon doesn't as well, but T-Mobile uh, is known for deprioritization, and they're very much um, more in the volume game. So they are giving these out to millions of customers. Uh, Verizon is kind of a, a close second, but T-Mobile has been much more open to sending this out to places that maybe they're not even sure if it's going to get great signal, and the user finds out that either, hey, it doesn't work well for them, or they're so... Uh, heavily congested on the network that they are slowed down during the peak times in the in the evenings and they can't use it basically so that's the caveat with t-mobile um but i've also seen the most speed with t-mobile um especially once they get away from their stock gateways and i'll show that here in just in a second at&t is the newer comer and definitely lowest uh, volume player that's out there today this is their giant egg that i call it gateway um and it does pretty good but it's actually been probably a little bit more inconsistent and um they have some difficulties as well and that's why i'll get into difficulties for all of these guys all right so let me touch on a couple ways that i have improved the performance regardless of which carrier it's at so um the first one is with a antenna to improve the signal so here on this Verizon Gateway, you can see I had opened up, I have a video on that of most of these, of how you open them up and then add on. These are little pigtails that hop onto the board inside of here, and then it gives me an SMA connector. This M SMA connector allows me to plug in an external antenna to this, and that antenna can be inside, it can be in the attic, or it can be outside. So here's one example of, this is a waveform quad mini antenna. So this is a smaller one. It is outdoor rated, but obviously it can be on a stand like this, or you can place it inside or on a windowsill or whatnot. Uh, this comes off, you can have suction cups in the back, it can have a pole mount on the back. Um, that is all um, optional um, setups there. And so on the other end is the SMA connector. Well, SMA connectors hook right into here, and I have instructions as well as waveform uh, for that matter of how you hook that up, and I have seen good improvement. This smaller antenna is not as big of an improvement as their Quad Pro antenna, which is probably about three times the size of this unit, um, or two and a half times, and then it goes outside, uh, ideally on a pole, and that's how I've got my really fast speed, and that's how I got over one gigabit per second with a Quad Pro antenna hooked up um, to actually not one of these stock gateways, but the other big uh, trick to getting speed and flexibility is a third party gateway or modem router setup all right so here has been another magic bullet for solving a lot of problems because this allows you to do tower locking it allows you to do band locking it allows you to have multiple sim cards and you can have failover um, or switch between verizon and t-mobile uh, as your carrier in here and this one has the sdx or the snapdragon um, x75 modem in it which is the latest modem out there uh, available today in the u.s and that one is able to aggregate lots of different uh, 5g bands combine them together and give you all that bandwidth so this one gave me over one gigabit per second in uh, download speed so very impressive unit here and this one again has the antennas that you can screw off and you can plug in a external antenna directly to this one as well this one has wi-fi built into it and so that is another thing that gives you a lot of capability there are a couple uh, problems with this and that's that some of these um, devices like this specific verizon one does not have a physical sim which you do need to plug in here one of their white cube boxes does have a physical sim so you can take that and put it out if you can't like on this one then i was stuck with adding antennas to it in order to improve the performance but this um, gateway here has a uh, sim card in it that you can just take out and put in um, devices like this you do have to do some settings in here to make it um, act the way you want it to i have videos on that of how exactly you do that but once you do that you're freed from a lot of the constraints in here you know these don't allow you to mess with hardly any settings um, especially the t-mobile ones they're the worst ones at um, settings and um, there is a hint control app that allows you to do some stuff but even that one they've been locking down where now they allow you to turn off a 2.4 gigahertz wi-fi but they won't let you do the 5 gigahertz wi-fi to turn off on this guy the verizon and at&t box give you more settings and i have videos that go through all of those but i'm going to get into now the other um, big drawback to pretty much all of the cellular stuff and that's if you want to do any advanced networking stuff where you host a uh, server, you have a NAS, and let's say you have a Plex server, or you have um, a lot of gaming that you want to host a, um, a game on, um, you're going to run into more problems with the cellular-based internet. 
And that's because they use, most of the networks use something called CGNAT, which is carrier grade NAT. And that means that they are treating their cell network as a large network and it's not the internet per se. So when this device connects, it's not connecting to the internet, it's connecting to the Verizon network or the T-Mobile network. And then you uh, share that network traffic with other users and then eventually it's ported out of that network and to the internet. And so a couple things happen with that. One, it means that you don't have a public IP address that can be referenced because it's not specific to you. The public IP address might be going to several different users. And so that really inhibits your ability to connect to a server or anything. There are ways to get around it. You have to like tunnel through with a VPN or a reverse proxy or other uh, kind of more advanced techniques. And so it's much harder for the end user. Whereas typically with cable or fiber, those are not an issue. You do get a assigned uh, public IP that you can access. So that also creates another problem with location. You'll notice with cellular internet, you might often change where your perceived location is. You know, I've had I've had mine be states away, actually, where I'm in Michigan, but it somehow shows up and I'm in Pennsylvania. It does vary a lot in that uh, sometimes it's better accuracy, sometimes it's not. And so, again, that's kind of up to the carrier and just how they're routing you through their network. All right, and then one other uh, unit that I have enjoyed, this is actually the 4G unit. So this is an Alsys um, Implamax. Now, they do have a new 5G unit. It's actually installed on my tower outside, so I'm not going to climb up 40 feet to get it. But this is their 4G unit, and the idea of this kind of concept is a little bit different than the inside units with a outdoor antenna instead this is powered with a power over ethernet ethernet cable and then the modem and um, router not wi-fi router but just regular router is built into here and this is your antenna and your unit and then once you get inside your house it is just a plain old ethernet cable maybe more aligned with what you'd expect from like a cable or fiber you end up with a little ethernet jack and then that will go into your own wi-fi setup that you provide so this is another great way to go um, if you don't want a individual gateway and antenna installed. All right, so one of the other issues with cellular internet is that uh, the ping or latency can be worse, but unfortunately it's not consistent and I can't uh, really predict. You know, I had issues early on, especially with the T-Mobile gateway. My loaded ping or my buffer bloat would be terrible. I mean, seconds, right? So two, 300 milliseconds of loaded ping uh, which would mean video conferencing game and that kind of stuff would really be unusable, even if I had really fast speed. So um, that has improved over time, and it depends on your signal and your tower and the backhaul setup in there. And I've noticed that um, if I go to different gateways, some of them do better than others. And that's where if I go to a third-party gateway, I've seen much improved speed and performance. In fact, with the Altsys 5G um, Amplimax unit I have outside, I've gotten as low as like nine milliseconds of um, unloaded ping. And it does a really good job there of not uh, getting drastically worse with it being loaded as well. So that can vary somewhat on the hardware that you have, but as well as your signals. And so that fast ping, I would say, was really tied to 5G standalone. Um, and that's the type of uh, network that um, the carriers are trying to go to. T-Mobile is the only one that really has 5G SA rolled out. But for some reason, they don't allow their home internet gateways connect to, connecting to it for some reason from what I've seen. So that's another benefit of going to a third-party uh, gateways that allows you to lock onto that. I've seen faster speed, uh, download and upload. I've seen faster uh, ping and um, a lot of improvement there. So I think cellular in general has a lot of uh, opportunity. I think it can be very good for me personally. I get actually really good performance. I consider really good performance for where I'm at on all three carriers, right? They're all very usable. Right now, my speed king is T-Mobile. I think Verizon could be uh, faster, but they throttle it, so I'm stuck with that. And then AT&T has been probably my most inconsistent. There's been some days it's been really good. I've got hundreds of megabits per second down. And then other days I'm getting like 75 or 100. I'm not exactly sure why they seem to be a little bit more inconsistent uh, from time to time. But hopefully that kind of touches on a lot of um, questions or thoughts of what I've experienced. And now I've had some people ask me, well, you know, if you only had to pick one, which would it, would it be? That's a very hard um, question to answer for me personally. I like having the redundancy. I don't need six of them, uh, so I sh should probably get rid of some of them, but I do it for the testing. Um, as far as the Speed King, 
for me is T-Mobile here. I would love it if Verizon did not throttle theirs because I think um, it's been one of the more consistent and uh, stable connections I've had. Um, AT&T has shown a lot of promise, but it's been inconsistent there. So it's probably right now my least favorite, but I do like a lot of their settings that they have um, on the gateway. So, um, you know, there's kind of pros and cons to each of them. So probably if I had zero need for a public IP address, I didn't uh, want to host anything or, or do that kind of stuff, then probably T-Mobile would be my favorite for me. At least it's my fastest performing one. Once I have good hardware, then I'm able to get some really blazing speeds with it. Um, otherwise, I think between Verizon and AT&T, it's kind of hard for me to say. For me personally, my AT&T seems to be less stable and less consistent, so it would be a Verizon choice. But then I'm also throttled, so they all have kind of their pros and cons, I would say. And it really probably depends on what your actual performance is at your house. And uh, so I would, I would have to say you have to kind of test it to truly find out. But no matter which one you pick, there are ways to improve it either with an antenna or with a um, third-party gateway. All right, so one free way to get faster speed is actually with the placement and maybe a little bit of research as far as where your cell tower is at and where you need to place the unit. And you have to dive into the settings to get the uh, signal information from the unit so you can really fine tune your, your unit there. So I have some videos on that, um, but what you want to do is you can use a site like cellmapper.net. You can go in there and you can find out where your local towers are. And um, then you can see in the gateway settings which tower it's connected to. It'll have like a, a number, a uh, CGI number or um, you know, PCI number that you can um, look up and see where that tower is at. And then you want to place the unit um, in your house where it gets the best signal there. So you got to be cognizant of if you have a low E windows, they block the signal a lot. If you have brick or metal, uh, they block. The, the signal and so you want to place this the best you can or use an antenna so you can get outside and get around all of your um, obstacles in your house but then still you have to aim the antenna so you got to know where you need to aim it towards to get that best performance and some of these gateways are very sensitive to rotation just like five degrees um, a couple degrees can make a big difference in the speed some of them are really that sensitive so you want to mess with that uh, first and really make sure you you've kind of tried out different areas different floors of your house um, to find the best signal there all right so i know this video is a little bit vague and it's me kind of just talking about my experience but hopefully it gave you some uh, thought starters some ideas some things to go dig into and then if you have questions you know first go check the links i put down below and uh, see if any of them uh, help you out with more information and then of course you can add a comment to the video where you can either ask me something or you can share your own experience of what you've had uh, with this or why you switched over to cellular home internet so um, put that down below and I do read those comments and I do try to respond to them. So uh, I appreciate everyone tuning in and following along and we will talk to you next time.